curse of Yahuwah is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And Mama and I are always thankful every week yes, on Mama. the Sabbath day when you join us on the Sabbath, remembering to keep it holy. holy. Amen and amen. amen. And we're always thankful for all of you who are here with us on the chat and joining with us on this Sabbath day, or whether you join us after, it's all right. But we have a special blessing when we meet with you on the Sabbath, and we're very grateful for every one of you who joined with us from across the earth. And we shout out to all of our brethren from uh, South Africa to New South Wales to Australia to Europe to Jerusalem and throughout the entire of the United States of America Welcome to Remnant House. Amen, amen. and amen. And today, uh, you know, we're, we're finally through the spring uh, early feast. Anyway, we still have Shavuot, but we're through these feasts. And that was a glorious time. Yes, amen. It was. it was a wonderful experience. We had a couple of people that needed to get water baptized. Amen. And that is always a blessing. Uh, when we get the honor of water baptizing the saints. And so it is our delight and privilege that we got to enjoy that over this Passover season. And now we're open for business. It's warm enough, right, Mama? It's warm enough for us to dunk yes, you now. It All right, it was a little cold over the winter, we understand. But now we're open for season. So yep. come on down <laughs> whenever you like. Let us know you're coming. Amen. Uh, don't surprise us. That's not good. But come on down and let us be, we'll be happy to feed you, happy to uh, uh, accommodate you in any way that we can. And we certainly would love the honor of water baptizing you in the name of Yahusha. Amen. Amen. And so thank you to our whole team who made that happen. And for all of the members of the house, all the partners with Remnant House, each and every one of these souls you have a part in. And you know, this is one of the things that was whispered into my Ruach uh, many years ago. You have to share this vision so that they can come in because otherwise they won't be doing any of these things. They won't do these things. But by partnering with the ministry, with partnering with the work, it is as if you are doing it. And this is a beautiful picture of unity, of being together, of being united in one purpose. And I'm so thankful for every one of our brothers and sisters throughout the earth. Uh, Mama and I are very grateful for every one of yes. you. Uh, we gush over you. We talk mm -hmm. about you all in very wonderful ways. And when we are concerned about you, uh, we talk about that too. And we get before the king. And lo and behold, things start to change. Mm -hmm. So, you know... We know our role. Our role is to be here for you, to stand in the gap when we can. Uh, we know that we have a high priest who has passed into the heavens, seated at the right hand of power. Amen. Uh, but we continue to intercede for our brethren as he, as he asks us to, to pray even for your enemies. I mean, if you're praying even for your enemies, I know you're praying for your enemies, right? All right. If you're praying even for your enemies, don't forget your friends. 
That's right. Amen. Good point. I'm looking for my friends. That's right. Only people with kids know it's like that. And speaking of children, all of you young ones out there, we're so glad you got the chance to join us. Uh, We love hearing from you, uh, all of you. I'm not going to start the naming thing because then I'll be here for a while. But I'm grateful for every one of you. We're thankful that you join us. Now be good and listen to Mama. She said to sit down. She meant sit down. Play with, get the coloring going. Yeah, sit there, relax, calm down. We're going to get into the Word today. Amen. Amen. And today we're going to be talking about the glory. And you know, it says that He will come in the clouds with power and great glory. Mm. Great glory. How many know that the enemy is trying desperately to quench the glory of Elohim, wants to steal the glory, wants to obfuscate the glory, but there is no stopping the glory of our Elohim. Amen and amen. Amen. And so uh, let this word, I pray, be an encouragement to you. It may, uh, there are things that whenever we get into the scripture, whenever we get into the word, it's going to find you out. The shoe fits, you're going to need to wear it, right? So if it rebukes you in an area, that's so that you get benefited. Better that you get rebuked and corrected now, right? Before the king comes, then you wait until all eyes behold him. And at that point, that is not the point at which you're going to see repentance. That's the point at which you're going to see much weeping. Right and gnashing of teeth. So now is the time of repentance. Now is the time of acknowledging him, right? Saying, you know, Father, I I really need help in this area or that area. And get before him, beat your chest, acknowledge your sin, acknowledge your weakness, acknowledge his right to rule, acknowledge his right to give you commands. Amen. Amen. How can you give commands? This is why many of you, your commanding is not working because you're not submitting to commanding. Mm. Amen. So if you don't submit to commanding, you don't have power to command. And so this is where a lot of people are going to find themselves powerless before the demonic horde because they did not obey. Therefore, they don't have obedience coming back to them from the demonic. This is why we need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness because the devils are going to check you. They're going to chin check you. Okay, and here they come. And I'm telling you, they are manifesting. If you run a search on paranormal activity or poltergeist activity, any of those on any of your video search engines, watch the results that come back. Watch a few of those and you're going to suddenly realize, whoa, we got some serious new challenges going on in our world. And so those people that are doubling down on false and on lies, on deception, well, they sowed lies, so they reap lies. They're deceiving and being deceived. And so this is where the enemy wants you. He wants you to have confidence in that which is false. So that in the day of trouble, you put your confidence in that and it fails you. Okay? And so we're going to talk about this a little bit today. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 40. Because again, the king is coming on the clouds with power and great glory. Amen. Now, one of the earliest uh, reflections of this glory happens back here in the book of Exodus. So I want to take us back there for a moment, quick moment, because here we're going to see something that we read in the Torah when we do our Torah readings. Here we're going to see a physical manifestation of the glory of Elohim. Amen. Turn there with me. Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. Are you there, Mama? Mm -hmm. All right. And it says, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. Now, this manifestation was coming in the form of what would look like smoke or a cloud. 
And Moshe was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because of the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. All right? So it is the glory of Elohim filling the tabernacle. The place of meeting is the place of his glory. Your place of meeting is the place of his glory. Amen. Amen. And so this is the place you come when you need help in time of need. Where do you come? You come to his glory. Amen. You get an answer to his glory. When the answer comes, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to worship to his glory. Amen. Amen. And you're supposed to acknowledge that he gave you the thing you asked for to his glory. Are you seeing Amen. this today? Amen. And so what is this word glory here? This word glory is the Strong's word 3519. It, it is kavod. Kavod is the Hebrew word Kabul. It means glory, honor, glorious, abundance. Okay, so in this, in his presence is fullness of joy. It is fullness of everything you could need. He is the source of all that you see in creation. If you see something in creation and want to know where it came from, it came from him. Everything came from him. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. So he has abundance. Whatever you need, he has more of it. Amen. Abundance, riches, honor, splendor, glory. Where do you find it? In his presence. Honor, dignity, honor, reputation, honor, reverence, glory. And so he is... He is Manifesting his divinity, his absoluteness, his um, the 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 almightiness, if you will, that there is nothing he cannot do. That he is the Elohim of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for him? And so this is what you're experiencing. If you were there at that time, you would have seen this, and it would have overwhelmed you. For but the glory of Elohim, the mag the majesty, the the unlimited power. And this is the same Elohim who has by his son called us into a covenant relationship. I want you to get this today, saints. I want you to get this all the way down in your ruach, because it is this Elohim, the maker of heaven and earth. King of all creation, who has opened the door, the new and living way, which is through Messiah's flesh, to make it possible for you to come to the glory. Mm, amen. So that you can come to the glory. So that when you have need, you can come to the unlimited glory of Yahuwah Elohim. Somebody amen. give him some praise. Hallelujah. Yes. And that means that you'll never lack. There'll be nothing that you need that he cannot provide. Yeah, that's right. Amen. He is abundance. He doesn't have abundance. He is abundance. Amen. He doesn't just have glory. He is glory. He is glorious. Amen. He doesn't just have riches. He created riches. He created gold. He is the creator of gold. He is the creator of silver. He's the creator of every precious stone. Amen? So there's no limit in him. He's the one who imagined it and then manifested it. So there's no limit to what he, he can do, right? And so this is his honor, his splendor, his glory. Now, we see this pictured in the natural, but how many know that his glory is in the Ruach, because they that worship him must worship him in Ruach and Emet, in the spirit and in truth, for he is a spirit. Amen? Elohim is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So are the natural manifestations 
the purest form of his glory? Well, I don't believe so. I believe that they are this level. They're, they're, they're limited to this dimension. But how many know in the Ruach, his glory is even more magnified? So what you saw in the tabernacle as absolutely overwhelmingly stunning as that is, it is still a fraction of who he is in the Ruach. Amen. He is creator. I mean, I just hope you're, you're grabbing this today. And I pray by the Ruach of Elohim that you would. He is creator. It didn't exist. He thought it up. And then he speaks and it manifests. He creates by the spoken word. Amen. Amen. And so when he is commanding his children to go and do certain things, it is not in the hope that they do it. It is not the, um, I'm going to tell you what to do and let's see. He is saying those that are his, this is what they will behave like. Those that are his will conduct themselves this way. And that is how you will see those who are his and those who are not. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you will know the difference. And you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Amen. Thank you, Mama, right? That's Thank right. you, Elohim, for that freedom in Mashiach. Mm -hmm. And so we see that glory that he wants manifested on us. We're going to get there today because he wants glory to manifest on us. But it's his glory, right? Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 33 it says the curse of Yahuwah. Watch this now because a lot of people, they are trying desperately to get prayer. Somebody help me. And they have the curse on their life. Are you paying attention yes, today? Sir. The curse of Yahuwah is in the house of he who twists his word. So if you twist or change or modify, which is what wicked is, think Garden of Eden and the devil comes and twists the word of Elohim, hath Elohim really said. This is where the curse abides. He that blesseth the habitation, oh, it says, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. And we found out that the just live by his faith. And so he says, surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly, right? The wise shall inherit glory. What's this? The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Okay, shame is the promotion of fools. And so... He is warning us that he is the destroyer. Now, it's one thing when the devil is coming for you, you got a fight on your hands. But when Elohim's coming for you, there's no fight. It's done. It's over. Okay? And so uh, it, it, there are many, many people that did not really think hard about the curse. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he details the curse. And it's all based on hearkening diligently to the voice of Yahuwah Elohim. Now, if you have curse operating in your life, if you're one of those people right now, somebody wrote to me recently and said, Bo, there's curse operating in my life. I need help. There's only one way curse can operate in your life, and that is by unrepented sin. Mm, good point. Okay? So whenever there is a curse operating in your life, the answer is not, what is the antidote to the curse? The answer is not, how can I ask Elohim to just stop the consequences yeah. of what's happening? Oh, no, no, that. no. You don't ask Elohim to stop the consequences. You need to put a, 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 a cover in the hole in the dam. Yes. Amen. Preach you need it. to go to the source of the problem. Yes. And that means you need to cry out to Elohim and ask him, what did I violate? Yes. What did my ancestors violate? What sin has been committed that has opened this breach? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's when he's going to show it to you. And that's when you're going to see. And that's when you can repent. Then the curse can be lifted. You can talk to a hundred preachers. 
you can go find the most anointed men and women on earth, okay? You could find Messiah himself walking around. Unless you're willing to repent, that curse ain't coming off you. Amen. All right, what did he say to the woman that he healed and cast demons out of? Mm. All right? Yep. He cast demons out of her yeah. and he healed her. And then he rebuked those who wanted to stone her. Yep. And he said, go and sin no more, Amen. lest the worst thing come upon you. Right. right? Okay. Right. <laughs> and we know that an unclean spirit, he goes out of a man and he seeks rest, finds none, goes back to his house, finds it swept and garnished and goes and finds seven spirits worse than himself and goes back and inhabits that man and the last day of the man is worse than the first because you're a temple and you need to be filled with the glory. I say it again, you need to be filled with the glory. Amen. Amen. And the glory comes when you obey his word. When you obey, look at what happened in the, in the wilderness why did he inhabit the tabernacle, which is a picture of you, the believer? He inhabited the tabernacle because they did everything he asked them to do. See how that works? He asked you to do something. You do it. He's pleased with you. Glory. That's not complicated. Right. Every parent understands it. Every boss understands that all you bosses out there, all you managers, all you overseers, you ask them to do something, they do it cheerfully. What's your reaction? In the same way, Elohim responds to those who cheerfully and humbly do what he commands. Amen. And so the curse of Yahuwah is in the house of those who twist his word. He told them to do something, they go and they twist it. What did he say to Saul? He said, go kill all the Amalekites. Saul leaves Agabashan still alive. He, he's got the bleeding of the sheep in his ears. The prophet comes and says, how is it that I hear the bleeding of sheep in my ears, right? You didn't obey the word. You twisted it. We said all. What part of all didn't you get? How many of your sins do you want forgiven? All? then how much of his honor do you need to bring? Mm -hmm. All. Yes. Same word, right? Mm -hmm. But we want the benefits. There are some, not everybody, not the remnant, but there are some that want the benefits, but they don't want to respect the king. This is Luciferian. They want to live in his, in his creation, but show him no respect. This is from the devil, okay? This is from the devil. This is a demonic evil satanic doctrine a luciferian doctrine that many people believe and walk in with the full expectation that they're going to be warmly received by elohim and they are flat deceived and i'm telling you to your face you are deceived if you think that you can dishonor yahu elohim right up until the coming of messiah and then walk up and be warmly received you will not be all right, he, his word cannot come back void. He will always accomplish the thing whereunto he sends it. And so the curse he says is in the house of the wicked. He even tells us in the book of Malachi that he curses the blessings. So he blessed you, but then he put a curse on you. Mm. Because invariably what happens when people get a little blessing? They get haughty, right? They get uppity. They think themselves higher than they ought. Yeah. They start getting big and bad, right? And they don't need Elohim anymore. So now you put a curse on your blessings yeah. to bring you back home. Yeah. Okay? Because you were talking big smoke and you need to come on home <laughs> before you end up in smoke, before you get smoked. Amen. And so he says that the blessing is in the habitation of the just. The just live by faith. Faith worketh by love and faith cometh by hearing. And surely he scorneth the scorner uh, but giveth grace unto the lowly. And so those that are scorning him, those that are being disrespectful, you will be disrespected. Those who sow dishonor have nothing but dishonor on its way to you. And it will be horrifically embarrassing 
It will be beyond red face sad. It will be beyond red face shame. Okay, you do not dishonor Elohim and get away with that. Okay, I'm just saying. I want you to think about this, husbands. If somebody dishonored your wife, would they get away with it? No, sir. Okay, and now I want you to imagine that you're almighty. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay, you're not getting away with dishonor. You're not getting away with disrespect. And many are trying. They have a very bad attitude, which they got from the devil. And they're very angry that they have to submit. Right? Anybody angry about submission is going to hell. Yeah. All right? You're going with the devil. Every 100%, 100% of those who are saved are all submitted. Yeah. <laughs> they're all part of a mission. That's what submission is. Yeah. Amen. They're all part of a mission. So if you want to be in that number, you better get in the mission and you better submit to the mission. Amen. And then help get the mission done. A hundred percent of the saved are on mission. So if you're not on a mission, that's not a good sign. Amen. And there's a lot, many will come to him in that day saying, Lord, Lord, right? So we need to be very careful. Here's the seventh slide. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 2. Turn there very quickly with me. Okay, because we're here at the day of Yahuwah Zabaoth. We're here at the day of Yahuwah of hosts, which is when he releases the angelic hosts. And I don't know if you know this or not, but the angelic hosts are with him. And they have no patience for sin. Had he released them, there would be no more sinners on earth. So he's holding them back to keep them from destroying. He holds the earth back from swallowing inhabitants. Amen? He has to hold it back to give time because the earth wants to vomit up the sinners. All right? Isaiah chapter 2, and take a look at verse 12. It says, For the day of Yahuwah Sebaot shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty. Okay? Because this is the proud and lofty do not bring him glory they want the glory for themselves and upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low why because you touch the glory and upon the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon the oaks of Bashan and upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up and so he is speaking now in the spirit he is speaking to principalities and powers. This is why he's shifted to cedars of Lebanon. And you're sitting there going, I don't know what he's talking about. What does he mean? This is a nickname. Okay, this is a nickname of some demons. Uh, principalities, cedars of Lebanon, high, uh, and the oaks of Bashan, these are all nicknames. These are his inside statements. He's letting them know that they will not endure his judgments. That all these spirits that think they're all that, they're going down. Okay? And upon every high tower, so he's calling their high towers, he's speaking to them in the Ruach. And upon every fence wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. So this is all the idols. Okay? And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and Yahuwah alone. What does that say? Yahuwah alone. alone shall be exalted in that day. Mm, amen. Woo! Okay? And, and, and what is he going to do with the idols? Well, here we go, folks. So the people that are holding on to false names or idolatry, right? Here it is. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth. See this? Instead of repenting, this is the reaction. And into the caves of the earth for fear of Yahuwah and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake terribly the earth. The what of his majesty? The glory, the splendor, the abundance of his majesty. You see, they showed disrespect. And had they been showing respect, they would be excited to see him. But because they showed him disrespect and dishonor, they're running like scared babies, right? into the caves of the earth for fear of Yahuwah. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, 
which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. What? To the moles and to the bats. And you go, huh? What's he talking about? To the moles and to the bats. What does that mean? Oh my. In that day shall uh, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold. Right? So you know, we've already read many, many times, I believe in this book of Zephaniah, he specifically says their gold and their silver will not save them yeah. in this day. Okay, so everybody trying to sell you gold and silver that's going to somehow going to save you, somehow preserve you. He is telling them, no, it will not. No, it will not. In that day, men shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. And you may just look at this and go, I don't even know what this really, I don't really get this. Okay, well, let me help you out. There's something common about moles and bats. You know what that is? They're both see. blind. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't even see that. They're good both point. blind. Oh, that's good. Okay. And so what did he warn us about the last days? That there would be the blind leading the blind. That oh. both would fall into the ditch. Okay. So neither the mole nor the bat can see. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> wow. So they have blindness on their eyes. And because of their blindness, they're haughty. Their haughtiness is guaranteeing their judgment. So if they could finally see, they would see not only the truth, but they would also see their own state. And seeing their own state, they would naturally repent, which yes. is why Messiah said if they would come to him, he would have to open their eyes and they would be converted. Why would they be converted? Because they would be like that man who suddenly saw himself beat his chest, says, woe to me, a sinner, Repents. Why? Because his eyes are no longer closed like a mole. Now his eyes are open. He realizes, oh my, I'm going to hell. Mm -hmm. Now he's repenting. If his eyes never open, he's arrogant. Yeah, good point. Okay? And so the glory and majesty doesn't matter to him because he can't see it. So he ignores the glory of Elohim. There's some of you are wondering why it is that people can walk right by Elohim and don't even show him any respect. They show no honor to him. He will bless them, give them abundance just for their judgment, all right? And then they will ignore him like he didn't do a thing to them. They're blind as a bat. They're as blind as a mole. They cannot see what they are doing, okay? They can't even discern um, what they are doing. And so they are, they are opening the door for the demonic to come into their world, basically. They don't even realize the judgments that are falling upon them, and they think they're being blessed. How many know that when you're getting debt given to you, which is what those bills are, you are not being blessed. The more of that you have, the more debt you have. <laughs> and as soon as you figure that out, as soon as the molds and the bats come yeah. off your eyes, you go, wait, what? Yeah. Wait, 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 what? Well, I don't want to, oh, it, oh, oh, whoa, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, they, and you realize that they have hustled uh, all of mankind in the world. And it said all the world was under the sway of the wicked one. So you shouldn't be shocked at that. Only a remnant understand it and have their hands burned, right? Because they know how to bring him gold tried in the fire. Mm. All right, so they know how to do this. Well, why is that? Because they got oil for their eyes. So they got eye solve, which he said you needed eye solve, so you wouldn't walk around like a blind mole or a blind bat. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm preaching today, y'all. Yes, y'all are. are not an amen and as good as I'm preaching. I'm just saying. <laughs> I get better. <laughs> And so we turn to Isaiah chapter 42. We chuckle because it's almost like a nervous laugh. Like, wow, this is serious. It is. Yeah. Yeah. The glory of Elohim is very serious. I mean, it doesn't get any more serious, right? And so we need to have respect for the glory of Elohim. It was so powerful that even his favorite on the earth. I mean, Moshe couldn't even go in there. Right. And he's his chosen vessel. 
He speaks to Moshe face to face. And Moshe couldn't even go in there. That's how thick the glory of Elohim was. That's how intimidating and just, whoo, you don't, you don't mess, okay? You get on your face fast. And see, people that get the concept of that kind of respect, but showing it, really putting your face in the dirt and showing that kind of respect, it's one thing to imagine, it's another thing to do it. Amen? And it's not in the mole in the bat to do that. They just think they're great. That's how they end up at a wedding supper without the garments on. Amen? That's how they end up there. So in Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 5, did I already say that? I think I did. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, or thus saith Elohim Yahuwah, He that created the heavens and stretched them out. Any questions about who we're talking about? The Creator. He that spread forth the earth, he and that which cometh out of it, and he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and ruach to them that walk thereon. Right? So he's making clear who he is. And by the way, this scripture, when you look at it the way it was written, without the changes, it doesn't say, thus saith the Lord God. That's not what it says. It says, thus saith Elohim Yahuwah. All right? So that is very specific. And he says, and stretched them out, and he spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, um, and he gave the spirit, right, to them that walked therein, right? And I, Yahuwah, look at this now, watch this now. Look what he says. He says, I, Yahuwah, called thee in righteousness, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, and for a light of the Gentiles. So you are being carried along. This is how I know that it is him because unless he opens your eyes, you're as blind as a bat. Okay? And it says that he did it. So he's taking you by the hand. Okay? He's taking you by the hand to bring you to the place he wants you to be. To open, look at this. Look at this next verse. Are you ready? To open the blind eyes. So here we have the exact same thing. And to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness or ignorance out of the prison house. I am Yahuwah. That is my name. So you see how clear that is? Somebody say amen. amen. Right? That is my name and my glory will I not give to another. So if you modify this, change it, you are trying to give another the glory of Yahuwah. It only belongs to Yahuwah, no one else. Okay? And so Godriel, which is the name of the devil, shortened his name to God, and that's what people worship. Neither my praise to graven images. Right? And so... He is extremely specific here in Isaiah. There is no ambiguity. This is also the same book that you will find that it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear to Yahuwah Elohim. All right, so are you seeing this? But how many know that if you look around social media, you look around church Christianity, you're not going to find very many people with their eyes open. You're going to find most of them are like the mole and the bat. Yep. Completely oblivious and doubling down on their blindness. In fact, if you try to help them, they will turn and rend you. They will attack you. for. Yeah. They will think that you have attacked something sacred and say, how dare you come for my J-hook? Yeah. I know it's only been around since the 1500s, but it's still mine. Right? And they will defend it like it's holy. I did. We all did it. We all didn't know what we were doing until yeah. he takes you out to the wilderness yes. to have that conversation with you to open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Then you repent and you go, oh, Father, what were we thinking? This is why you cannot, your, are you seeing, seeing this? Your eyes open up. You can't give your open eyes to someone else. You're wondering, what? 
what is it? Why don't you get it? And I, I my brethren, I think of my brethren uh, that are on uh, Sean and Brian. You know who you are. Uh, you know people like you, my brother Gerald. You must feel like you're banging your head against the wall. I feel such compassion for you because I've been at this a while, as you all know, and I know that feeling. But unless he opens their heart and opens their mind, you are wasting your time. Yeah. Amen. We preach the gospel to see who he's already awakened. Yes. Exactly. We preach the truth Amen. to see who already yes, is connecting, right there. not yes. to persuade them. They are already persuaded by the Ruach of truth. Yes, that's right. Amen. And isn't it funny how when you arrive at a truth and you find other people there, how united you become yep. easily. This is the beauty of our fellowship because our brethren who come to sit with us and worship with us and fellowship with us and get baptized, we're already in agreement. So we don't have conflict like the world does and like the denominations do because they can't agree. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and they're all deceived. Yeah. And every one of them who do not know how to keep his Sabbath day, every single one is deceived. So anyone who moves the day, they obeyed the devil, they followed the devil into, into error and sin and became blind. So like moles and bats, they cannot see anymore. That doesn't mean they're not determined. Doesn't mean they're not trying really hard. Have you ever watched a bat trying to fly out of a room? They sure try really hard. Yes, it's not for a lack of effort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. And uh, if you've ever caught a mole, uh, uh, we caught one one time. I actually caught a mole. Didn't know what it was. <laughs> you're staring at that thing going, what? Are you? You're not a mouse. What are you? <laughs> you're big. <laughs> you big real mouse. big. Right? <laughs> And the thing couldn't see, and it just and its legs were moving though. It wanted to keep going even though it couldn't see where it was going. And it just reminds me of so many people. They're blind, but their legs are moving. Yeah. How many know that you need to stop moving, get before him, and cry like blind Bartimaeus and say, Son of David, Son of David, have mercy on me. Open my eyes. What would you that I would do for you? That I would receive my sight. Amen. And this is our prayer remnant. Oh, remnant. I pray this prayer for me, for you, for all of us. That we would receive our sight. Amen. Amen and amen. Because there's nothing sadder than to be walking around this earth a blind man. Amen. And so he says, he says, I am Yahuwah. That is my name and my glory will I not give to another. And so those that think, oh, that doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. His name's not that important. Clearly do not know him. So that anyone giving you that advice doesn't know him. Because anyone who knows him, it's like somebody pretending they know somebody and they say, oh, you know, like somebody, if they pretend to know me and they say, yeah, I know Pete, right? You can know right then and there they don't know, I know me. You. I don't know you at all. You can know right then that they <laughs> don't know me. Yes. Because you would know how much I hate being called Pete. Yes. Right? So if you know me, you would know that. If you don't know me, you're going to pretend to have closeness with me. Mm -hmm. And you're going to fake it. Like, hey, Pete, how you doing? Like we're buds. And you're going to look foolish. You see what I mean? In the same way, people that don't know him will say dumb statements like, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, he knows my heart. Oh, it's no big deal. If you knew him, you wouldn't say any of those right. things. That's right. If you knew him at all, you wouldn't say those things. Instead, you would say, oh, no, you don't mess with his name. You would get that same reverence that you have, say, like for your grandfather or for your dad, or for any other person you respect, and that you know they don't like when you mess with their name, right? And you would correct somebody. And, and if you know me, you're my friend, and somebody says, yeah, Sean, I want you to introduce me to Pete, you would turn right to him and say, hey, hey, ho, ho, hey, hey. <laughs> Let me just help you out here, okay? Don't you ever call him that, all right? And they would look at you like, oh, yeah, he don't like that. Right? So that's how you would show someone that you knew that other person by knowing these details. Mm -hmm. So somebody that tells you that his name doesn't matter or it's no big deal clearly doesn't know him. Right. 
and they are working with the enemy in their blindness. Mm -hmm. All right. They don't even realize that they are working for the devil. Mm -hmm. I believe many people work for and prophesy for evil without knowing it, not even realizing that they're actually speaking or channeling a demon. And they don't even know it because their disobedience has opened a door. So many times you're talking to your aunt, to your cousin, and, and the response does not come from her or from him. It comes from the demon that controls them. And they'll speak it into their mind and they'll just simply repeat the words. So it'll be a slight delay. And you'll test that and find they don't really know what they're talking about um, because they're listening to somebody else. Yeah. So when you dig... You'll find that they can't handle that digging and then they become hostile with you. All right. That hostility comes in uh, because you're calling them out. You're calling out that spirit of lie, that deceiving spirit. OK. And, and you're going to end up in conflict. And so this is why I'm telling you, saints, anybody who tells you his name doesn't matter is a liar. Yeah. And the truth is not in him. Right. OK. All right. So just know that. Uh, because that's one of the commandments uh, and it is a very serious one he says he will not hold anyone guiltless whom brings his name to naught or makes it vain so just understand that in Isaiah chapter 60 oh one of my favorite passages how do you not get excited hearing this except if you're a mole or a bat obviously but if you're awake and you are aware of what he is doing in this hour, then this passage of scripture is your future. It is your present and your future. Amen. It is. It should excite you to know that this is the destiny of the saints of Elohim. Look at this. He says, arise, shine. You're not a blind mole or a blind bat. No, no, no. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory, so you see how it is shining and light go together with his glory. Ignorance and darkness go against his glory. All right? And the glory of Yahuwah, whose glory? Very specific, Isaiah 60. This is not the glory of just some generic Lord out there, some generic uh, spirit some generic overseer or principality or power. No, this is the glory of Yahuwah, and there is only one. This is why they wanted to hide his name. The glory of Yahuwah is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So there are going to be moles and bats. Okay, watch this now. They're moles and bats out there. They're blind as bats. They don't know me. They don't know anything. They're walking in darkness. They're walking in lies. They're walking in seduction. They're walking in deception. They're walking in wickedness. For behold, watch this, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But Yahuwah! Who? Yeah. Who? You see this? He's very specific, but Yahuwah shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. They're going to see his glory, and the Gentiles in their mold, their, 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 the, the, the blind as a bat and the moles, right? They're going to come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Somebody say amen. amen. And I believe that there was a little bit of a game that was played, a little bait and switch, because with the release of the Dead Sea Scrolls, there was the awakening of the remnant of Yasharel. Coincidentally, the world, not wanting us to get ahead of them, decided to create a fictitious state. So you have similar timelines, but you're talking about two different entities. One is made by man, the other is fashioned by the Ruach of Elohim. Amen. After the obedient son, after the manner of an endless life. Woo, glory, hallelujah. 
And so we see that he says the Gentiles will come to thy light. So they're abiding in darkness, which is ignorance. They don't know anything. They have been lied to. And the Gentiles uncrossed over, uncrossed over. And where will they come? To Yasharel for light. The darkness shall cover the earth, grows darkness the people, but Yahuwah shall arise upon thee. Who is the thee in the conversation here? Okay, who's the thee he's talking about? He's talking about the commonwealth of Yasharel, the household of yeah. faith, as it is called. Yeah. Or as James said, the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Amen. That's who he's talking about. And he made this promise that when he's dispersed us, that he would gather us back again together. And so the Gentiles will see this glorious thing and they will come. In other words, they're interested. They know they've inherited lies. They know that what they're getting preached is a lie. So they see you start to walk in the truth. They see you, remnant, starting to walk in the real anointing, the supernatural power, the supernatural blessing of Elohim. And they come to your brightness. How is the enemy destroyed? By the brightness of the king's coming. Same words you're seeing over and over and over again. And in Habakkuk chapter 2, we read this just two weeks ago. Uh, you got to come into faith, right? Walking by faith, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You cannot keep a single commandment unless you're doing it by faith, right? And so Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12, Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood and established the city by iniquity. And how many cities are established in blood? Every single one of the Masonic cities built were built on blood. Behold, it is not of Yahuwah Sebaot that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory, the knowledge of the glory of Yahuwah, as the waters cover the sea. So the earth is filled and will be filled with his glory and with the knowledge of his glory. Amen. And so what's happening is he put a woe on those who went after the error of Balaam, who chased after the de demonic spirits, who dug up secrets out of the ground and followed the Nephilim, who listened to them. He said, woe to you, right? Woe to him that built the town with blood, who did what they taught you to do. Right? And, and, and he says in that it is not Yahuwah Sebaot that the people should labor in the very fire. Okay? So when you're living in these places, you're literally laboring right in the midst of hellfire. This is why it's so hard to, to see consistency in blessing. You're living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Get out. Amen. Just I'm just saying, not everybody, but some of you are. Okay? And then the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. So it's not like the answer to your question is not far from you, but you've got to be willing to do what he says when you hear it. You see, many times people want an answer from Elohim and then they want to evaluate the answer after it arrives. This is for somebody. Listen carefully, okay? The reason why the curse will not lift off your life is because you have to be prepared to do whatever he says. Whatever he tells you. Amen? And you can't put any conditions on it. And if you want to keep the conditions, keep your curse. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Sure. When you come to the place, you're like, I'm ready for, I'll do whatever he yeah. tells me. Now you're dead. Now that's right. a dead person. Come on, Anybody preacher. with a preference is still alive. That's right, preacher. Yes. Amen? And so if you want him to deliver you, you're going to have to give up trying to do it yourself or controlling the terms and conditions. Amen? If he is your savior, that means you have given up trying to save yourself. As long as you're trying to save yourself, what you need a savior for. Right. Good point. Right? So as long as you're trying to do it yourself, you don't need him. When you're ready to let him govern your life, let him be Lord and master, and I do what my master tells me kind of master, now he saves you. Not until. 
When people want to retain authority over their life and retain sovereignty while they get his benefits. Y'all better catch up. Okay? The whole world's fitting to catch up. I said the whole world is catching up right now. And they're realizing, no, they're not in charge. They told, they told each other that they're going to be gods. They all said to each other, you're going to be a god. You're going to be, a, what's up, my god? You know, and all this nonsense. But now the real one's coming. The real one's shaking the earth. The real Elohim of all creation is shaking everything. And the fakes and the phonies and the false spirits, they're all very nervous right now. There's a panic going on all over the earth in Matthew chapter 24 because they can smell this coming. In Matthew 24 and verse 7, it says, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So you will not have to wonder whether or not he's coming. Everybody that thinks this is a secret is completely deceived. I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you to your face the truth. As I stand before the living Elohim, you who think you're going to whisk away secretly are deceived. You need to be alive and remain. For wheresoever, look at this now, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. There's going to be a whole lot of dead bodies. A whole lot of people slain of Elohim. Many will be slain of Elohim. Okay? And this is one of the things that people struggle with because they can't believe that Elohim would slay people. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the natural man is looking up into the sky and is waiting for the moon to fall down, for the sun to fall down, for the stars to start falling out of the sky, okay? This is what the natural carnal, carnal man would use, I uh, think, as he read this, okay? But now when you understand that the moon represents something, and the sun represents something, and the stars represent something, so these are three mechanisms by which all deceivers, liars, and uh, those that are against the, uh, the Elohim of heaven reckon time. Some use the sun, some use the moon, some use stars, right? But any who do not do it exactly as Enoch uh, prescribed is in violation, okay? Which means they won't know what time it is. So the sun shall be darkened, we'll know what time it is. The moon shall not give her light. Won't know what time it is. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Won't know what time it is. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And they won't understand what is even going on. Because they're so used to being in charge. They've never experienced what they are experiencing in this hour. Remember, this has never happened before. And then shall appear. What's this? Appear means it wasn't visible. Now it's visible. One more time. It wasn't visible. Now it's visible. And what will you see? This is what you're going to see. The sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Does that sound secret to you? It sounds like they all can see him coming and they're bumming. Yeah. And instead of repenting, they just start crying and feeling sorry for themselves. They don't even know how to behave correctly. Okay? They start to just mourn. And they see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven with power and great what? Glory. Yeah, here comes that Amen. Uh, here comes that glory. Here comes glory. that abundance. Here comes that healing. Here comes that deliverance. Come here comes all the things he promised. And Come all on. those who are high and loft, uh, uh, lofty and, ha and haughty, they're all coming down. Ain't they? Amen. Oh, yeah, they're coming down. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Where are they? In the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so if you want to be, you want to meet the Lord in the air, you have to endure. Now I'll learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. Many, many people have taken the natural state of Israel created by the United Nations as the fulfillment of this scripture, even though they are, in my opinion, the synagogue of Satan. Um, this is not the recovering of the household of Israel. Yasharel is still scattered to the nations. 
Uh, so again, <coughs> what are they talking about? What is he talking about? He's talking about the real Yashara, the real awakening of his real people. And that is what you're seeing when you see branches tender and put it forth leaves. This happens in the spring when it's awakening from a long winter. And so you're seeing that exact thing going on right now as the saints, the true sons and daughters of Yasharel, those grafted in, those born again, who crossed over like Abraham by faith and became a Hebrew, right? Those are the people that are the, f the fulfillment of the parable of the fig tree, not a United Nations declaration, sorry. I just hate to break it to you, but that's just a reality. And, uh, but we live in a world of deception. So uh, we're dealing with parallels. We're dealing with two trees in the garden. You've got to pick one. Amen? Amen. And so you've got to use discernment to know which one to pick. And Messiah is warning about this. <clears throat> now, we've heard many people try to separate this into separate comings and all this different stuff. And I get it. I don't blame you for being scared. All right, you're scared. You want to you wanna get out of here quick. But the antidote to being afraid is not assuaging that fear. The antidote to your fear is perfect love. All right, perfect love is the antidote to your fear. And if you think perfect love is whisk away, then you've misunderstood the scripture. Because perfect love gives you the power to endure, to overcome. Amen? Yeah. And that is what you see in the book of Revelation. You see overcoming. You see he that overcomes seven times to the seven churches. Yeah. You see those who overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they do not love their lives even unto death. Mm -hmm. This sign seen in the heavens cannot be denied. All the tribes, even as carnal as they are, who have no spiritual discernment, blind as a bat and a mole, and even they can see the king is coming. Amen. And so this is what we are looking forward to, and this is what will manifest at some point. We are quickly reaching the point where he must intervene, lest there be no flesh saved. So we're racing toward that moment that he promised for the elect's sake, those days would be shortened. Amen. And in Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, he says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So everybody out there with their noble gold and their silver trinkets and their this and their that and their plans for this and their artificial that and they're going to get rich and all this stuff. What does it profit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, he's scared. You don't want to be a, you don't want to be set apart. Oh, you want to you want to blend in? Oh, okay, you're going to blend in, all right. Look what he says: Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. So, because if you're ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of you. And when he cometh in the glory of his Father, in the what? And he cometh in the what? In the what? In the what? The glory of his father. So great was this glory, even Moses couldn't go in the tabernacle. Mm, good point. So he's coming in the glory of his father with the holy angels. He's coming in this kind of tabernacle busting glory. Okay? The kind of glory that the whole earth sees and says, okay, we, we messed up. We messed up big time, right? And they want to hide themselves in the rocks, in the dens of the earth. And so again... This is why his true sons and daughters are not ashamed of them. They'll stand there and be ridiculed. Oh, yeah, you're going to ridicule me? Okay. You're going to make fun of me? Okay. You're going to speak evil of me? Fine. That's fine. Spell my name right. Right? Why? Because I want my reward. My king is coming in. My reward is with him, not with you. Right. My reward doesn't come from the popularity of men. My reward is not going to come from people talking well of me. In fact, I prefer, <laughs> listen, that's how you get rewarded. They spoke evil of the prophets, mm -hmm. and so they will speak evil of you, That's right? It. And so <laughs> great is your reward in heaven when men That's revile right. you That's and right. speak all manner of evil against you falsely. 
Yeah. Right? So don't even correct them. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you believe that, huh? Okay. That's false. But go ahead and speak all manner of evil. Because I'm going to get paid. Cheddar coming. Mm -hmm. Amen? And he is faithful. He pays his bills. So when he when he's bringing it, he's bringing it. And he's, his reward is with him. And so this is my encouragement to everybody that is waking up and their eyes are no longer blind as a bat. You're no longer as blind as a mole. You're now walking around going, wow, we are in trouble. Wait, the because I'm telling you right now, there's a whole lot of preachers that are all of a sudden going, they made fun of us a few years ago. They're slowly coming to us now going, hey, can you help me with this? Hey, can you help me with this? Not even bothering to apologize yeah. for the disrespect they showed just a few years ago. Yeah. Okay? When they were wrong. And now they're realizing they were wrong. There's a big humility program coming in. Mm -hmm. in, in Revelation chapter 16... And verse 8, you're going to see it. You're going to see this humility package coming in. And it says, The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of Elohim. They did what? So, so they're getting judged, and instead of worshiping Yahuwah, they get mad at the name of Elohim. Have you noticed some people getting angry when you try to tell them his name? Yeah. Okay? And they blaspheme the name of Elohim. By the way, when you give him a different name than the name he says, this is my name forever, if you give him a different name, it's blasphemy. Yeah. Good You've point. committed blasphemy. Just so you know. If he, if somebody says, my name is Sandra, a lady says, my name is Sandra, and you say, I'm just going to call you Stacy, you're committing blasphemy which have power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. To give who glory? Yahuwah, specifically. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the Elohim of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And after these things, right? So they repent not of their deeds. So what is happening here? They're blaspheming the name. It has gotten at this point, so this is towards the end. This is right before he comes. I mean, just a smidgen before he bursts through the clouds. And what, do you, what would you see as you, you have John's apostolic prophetic sight? What do you see on the earth? Do you see people repenting and coming into the commandments and keeping his and honoring him on the Sabbath day and bringing honor and the tithe and the offering and respecting Elohim? No. No. Even though his judgments are falling all over the place, what do they do? They blaspheme the name. They disrespect the name and don't even repent of their deeds. It says they neither repented of their fornications, their adulteries, their murders, or their thefts. And remember, he calls him a thief. So they don't repent for any of it. But they still expect that they're going to get into the kingdom. Okay? Even though they repent for nothing, saints. Nothing. And this is the rude awakening that Messiah has to bring. Many, he said, will come to me in that day, saying, Lord, Lord. But they showed no honor to Elohim, only to themselves wanting to be seen by others as a big shot, as a spiritual leader, as a big person, right? Having their name respected among people, that was their reward. That was their reward. Amen. Be Amen. careful out there, right? Revelation 19, verse 1, I'm coming in for a landing. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people, huh? Much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto Yahuwah, our Elohim. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at their hand. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And so compromising with the word of Elohim not a good plan.
Joining together with the whore of Babylon, again, not a good plan. Amen? And so those that think, oh, it doesn't matter, it's not a big deal, it's small things, oh, you're straining gnats, you're being too much of a, uh, you're, you're being nitpicky. No, there's a difference between what the Pharisees were doing, which was creating burdens too heavy for men to bear, and what Elohim is calling for, which is humble submission, as Messiah said, if you love me, keep my commandments which is to love one another, to bless one another. If you study the commandments, you will see that what the Pharisees were teaching was something else. It was called the Talmud, and it added thousands more regulations to the existing Torah of Elohim. Amen. And so my encouragement to you in this Shabbat is that you take this time to really meditate on the glory of Elohim because he says that he wants that glory to arise upon you. And we know that that glory will not arise upon you if you are living in disobedience or wickedness, twisting his word. So in order for that scripture to be fulfilled in your life, there needs to be a confession and a repentance, a cleanse of all unrighteousness. Okay. That when he looks upon your life, he sees you and says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so in Isaiah, he will say, arise, shine, for thy light as is come, and the glory of Yahuwah is risen upon thee in forgiveness, in the restoration of relationship, in the recovery of sight to the blind. Let's pray. Barukata, blessed are you, Yahuwah Elohim. We come before your throne and we thank you with all our hearts for opening our eyes to every area that we have been blind. And we do not see, say that we see, Father, for how can we know what we still remain blind to? Instead, we cry out to you, the giver of sight, that we would recover our sight. We cry out to you that you would continue to lead and guide us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We cry out to you in the name of Yahusha that you would not leave us abiding in ignorance and darkness, but would show us your great light and pull us out into the kingdom of your dear son. And so I pray for every one of these, my brethren, who are hearing this broadcast, who are part of your great kingdom. I pray that you would continue to strengthen them and encourage them in their inner man, that they would remember in whom they have placed their trust. And for those that are listening today, Father, who have just now awakened, I pray for mercy for them. I pray that you would have compassion upon them and that you would deliver them from destruction and give them understanding that they may recover quickly from the sin and the weight and the evil that would beset them. And I pray, Father, you would cause them to run their race and finish well. It is in Messiah's holy name we pray. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Somebody give them praise. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory! We love that part. That's our part that we love. We give them the shout of praise and know that we have won the victory. Amen. And I'm so delighted with every one of you that are part of the remnant. You are the real family of Elohim. You're the real recipients of the book. A lot of people read your book, but it's not for them, all right? Because they aren't the genuine and authentic Hebrew that crossed over out of being the old man into the new kingdom. Amen? That means you gotta lose all other identity, okay? So you used to be a Russian, now you're the remnant. You used to be a Greek, now you're the remnant. You used to be Chinese, now you're the remnant. You used to be Japanese, now you're the remnant. You used to be an American, now you're the remnant. Amen? You see, when you identify yourself some other kind of way, you're still staying in the old man. But when you realize that we crossed over and we're now part of the household of faith, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Amen? Amen. And amen. And I'm thankful for every one of you that stand with us in this house. 
please go over to remnanthouse.org and bring your best gift as you honor Elohim. Um, we are praying for you, and he specifically spoke to me about his provision for those that do respect and honor him. This is why I say it very clearly to you, because those that he has seen and moved in their hearts, his blessing shall be upon these vessels. And he is bringing splendor and abundance um, and no lack of any good thing. And so all of those who uh, played it fast and loose with the devil's stuff and were unfaithful with evil money and evil blessings and evil things, Messiah was very clear about that. If you are not faithful with that which is another man's, who will entrust to you the true riches? And so my admonition to you is if you have not been found faithful, now's a good time to repent. If you've been faithful, stay steady. Amen. That is what we need in this hour. For those of you that are being challenged by the Elohim of heaven, he gave me a word for you as well. Uh, you get a small window. And in that small window, if you jump in, it's just like any other opportunity that you have to see in the market. Okay, and you see the opportunity and you seize upon it. You're being given a small window where you will be able to seize upon it. If you do, you will be blessed. If you don't, you will remember that in the day of judgment. You will remember that you passed on that opportunity. And that's when you will have weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so I encourage you, if he's pulling on your heart, if he's opening a door for you, don't pass on it like you got millions of them jump through it like you're buying you know apple stock at a penny okay you jump in and you go with all in and let elohim bless you because he's opening doors to give opportunity to people but when that door closes he won't need you anymore okay and then that disobedience will be your permanent state and so let me remind you to obey him um and that you would be a, hear, a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Amen. And I pray his blessing be upon every home and every part of the remnant throughout the earth, wherever you are. That his blessing would be upon your children and upon your household, upon employees or partners or friends or co-workers and all who associate with you. May the blessing of Elohim be upon them as well. Amen. Well, that is all we have for today. Uh, we are enjoying some beautiful sunshine. Oh, gorgeous. Right so now. we are going to enjoy our Sabbath, and we pray that you do as well, that you have a recovery time. There's plenty coming up that is going to take our attention and take our energy. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's focus on fellowship, on being a family, on being united, Honor Elohim, pray and ask him to give you answers to those challenges that you're facing. And I believe he is going to answer you and deliver you from your destruction. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to hang out with all of you. And uh, we are definitely blessed by your notes, your comments, your words of encouragement. Ooh, please like and share and subscribe. Yes, I always forget to do that. So I think of Josiah. And I feel like he's going to yell at me if I don't tell him. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Dad! <laughs> so, thank you all for subscribing, for sharing, for joining with us. We are so thankful for every one of you. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, He alone is King of Kings.
far will sound and we will go